Hey everybody, this is Lindsay from WindingRowCrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to embroider on crochet. If you enjoy this tutorial, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications of future videos. Today we're going to learn five embroidery stitches as well as some tips and tricks. You are going to need a sample of crochet in order to embroider on and to practice. So since we are embroidering, you definitely want to use an embroidery needle. You want a nice sharp needle so we can make it through our stitches without having any trouble. And I'm sure you might be well aware that yarn does not like to go through the eye of a needle. So to get it through the eye of the needle, take a small piece of paper and wrap it around your yarn end. And then using that paper, slip it through the eye of the needle and the yarn end will go right with the paper and you'll be ready to start. So now tip three is all about getting started. Um, instead of doing a knot on the back of our work, since we are crocheters, we're familiar with weaving in our ends. So instead we're going to weave under a few stitches back and forth just a few times to secure that end. So once you've gone back and forth, you can then push your needle through to the front side of your work and then you'll be ready to go ahead and start embroidering. So for tip number four, it's all going to be about where we place our stitches. It is important to place your stitch into the center of a crochet stitch. It's going to really hold that stitch in place and not have it move around. As a crocheter, we're often used to working into these holes in between the stitches, but we really won't want to do that because it doesn't make your stitches line up on top of each other. So now that we know these tips, let's go ahead and learn some stitches. The first stitch we're going to learn is called the back stitch. To do the back stitch, you are just going to pull your needle up through the center of a stitch and then put your needle back down through the center of the very next stitch. Now, put your needle back through the next stitch. Again, making sure you work through the center of the stitches. Sometimes it's tricky, but most of the times you can get it. Now, the reason it's called the back stitch is we're going to go back one stitch and go through the same hole we've already used. That's going to give us a nice solid line. Now, move forward two stitches to this stitch here. And once again, go back to the previous stitch and use the exact same hole. And then you'll just repeat this, moving forward one stitch and then going back to the stitch before it to create a nice solid line. And here's what it looks like with a few more stitches done. Now let's learn the stem stitch, which is often used for the stems of flowers. So after pulling your yarn up through your first stitch, we are going to move two stitches over. So we are skipping a stitch. Push your needle about halfway through that stitch and then twist it so that you can come up through the skipped stitch. Make sure that you are not going through your embroidery yarn. Go ahead and pull it tight but not too tight, just a little bit of a loose tension. Now we are going to do this again. We are going to skip a stitch, go into that second stitch, and this time we're coming up through that same hole that we just used in the skip stitch that we skipped. Pull that tight. What it's going to do is make it look like your yarn is twisted on each other, giving it nice a thick look as well as a lot of really pretty texture. So doing this once more, we're going to skip a stitch, kind of twist our needle, fold your work if you need to, come up through the hole that we've already made in the stitch that we skipped, and just keep repeating that process. And here is the nice finished look. Now we are going to learn the split stitch, which is very similar to the stem stitch. To start the stitch, we are going to skip a stitch and work into the second stitch. Pull your yarn completely tight, then go back through the stitch that we skipped. You're also going to put your needle through the yarn as well. You're going to split your embroidery yarn. 
Now we're gonna repeat the process. Skip a stitch, go into that second stitch, pull your yarn pretty tight, and then come back through that skipped stitch. And make sure you're going through the center of the stitch and the center of your working yarn. Pull that through and continue. This creates a very unique little bit of a texture that's not very raised. So the stem stitch had a lot of raised texture. This is gonna create almost like a braided look without having as much uh, heavy texture. Here you can see a few more stitches are done and you can kind of see how it looks a little bit braided. So the next stitch is my favorite. It's called the Lazy Daisy Stitch. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it is so handy. I used it for this daisy, the lavender, and the flowers on top of these cactus. All right, so to do this stitch, find where you want the center of your flower to be and pull your needle up through that center stitch and go ahead and pull it all the way through. Now you want to insert about half of your needle back into that same stitch, move up one or two stitches and push your needle through the next stitch. Before you pull the needle all the way through, take your yarn and you are just going to gently wrap it around the needle. You do not want to have a really tight tension on here because that loop is going to be the petal of your daisy. So pull it until you have a very light tension, and then again, take that needle and go straight down where you had pulled out your yarn. So we're just making this teeny tiny stitch to hold that loop in place. This does take a little bit of practice, but it does have so many fun uses. So let's do this once more since it is a little different. We're going to pull our needle up through right about the same area that is the center of our flower. I'm gonna do an eight point flower, so I'm gonna go down this time. Insert my needle part way into that stitch that we just came up from, and then pick a stitch two stitches down and pull the needle out there. Wrap your yarn around, and then pull your yarn tight-ish, not too tight, not too tight of a tension because you do want a nice loopy petal. Once you have the tension where you want it, take your yarn needle, find where you pulled the yarn out of, and make a teeny tiny stitch. There you go. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the other petals and show you what it looks like. So here are my eight petals. And again, you get better at this with time. I'm still trying to master this stitch and it's a little bit nicer when you're working with embroidery thread, but it's just a very unique stitch that can really add some special detail. The very last stitch I'm gonna show you is the French knot. To make the French knot, pull your yarn up through the center of your daisy. Take your needle and point it towards you. Now using the yarn right out of the center of the daisy, wrap it around your needle twice. Holding that yarn, take the tip of your needle and insert it back into the stitch that we came out of. Doesn't have to be the exact same spot, but very close to it. Pull your yarn tight around your needle, not too tight, but a good amount of tension, and then very slowly pull your needle through the loops. I do find if you work really slowly with this, you get a cleaner looking knot. And there you go. That is your French knot. Let's make another one. We're gonna pull our needle up through a stitch Point your needle towards you and wrap the yarn around it twice. Now take the tip of the needle and put it back through the stitch that you came up through. And holding that tension on there, slowly pull your yarn and your needle through those loops. And there you go, there's your French knot. And there you have it, five tips and five stitches on how to embroider on crochet. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Make sure to like and subscribe.